In this video, let's just consider uh, some of the basic properties of angular momentum. Um, suppose we have a particle moving, and this is its momentum vector, and say we are over here, point Q. Then we can draw a position vector from point Q to the tail of the momentum vector like this, and in fact we can extend it and consider that angle theta. And then take the line of action for the momentum vector like this, and then what we want is the magnitude of the momentum vector times the perpendicular distance from point Q. This is our position vector for point Q. So we want to know the magnitude of the momentum, that's MV, times this perpendicular distance from Q to the line of action for the momentum vector. Of course, if this is theta, that is theta, and this perpendicular distance will be the position vector RQ times the sine of theta. And that is, of course, the magnitude of the angular momentum with respect to point Q. Now, you're probably more comfortable thinking of this in terms of taking the cross product between R and the momentum vector, where we consider then theta as the angle between these two. And actually, it works out the same. We're just not just in theta, but in the sine of theta. Well, if this is theta, this is pi minus theta right here. And if we consider the sine of pi minus theta, that's equal to the sine of pi times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of pi times the sine of theta. This is zero. That's negative one, you know, with that minus sign there, that equals the sine of theta. So, of course, it works out either way. Now, what we want to do is determine the direction of our angular momentum vector with respect to point Q. And Remember how that's done. Here we have our position vector, r. Here's the momentum vector. So r is going out something like this. This is r. This is q. And p, the momentum vector, is like this. But we have to draw them tail to tail. like this, then we go ahead and apply the right-hand rule. If we use our fingers on the right hand to move this over in alignment to the momentum vector, it's hard to demonstrate on the camera, but your thumb will be pointing downwards. We're going like this. So, I want to say RQ. That this is not just angular momentum, but is angular momentum with respect to point Q equals R cross P, and that points directly into the board, and we signify that with this kind of symbol. If it's coming directly out of the board, 
then it's a dot. But again, we want to emphasize that if you're working a problem and someone asks, what is the mom angular momentum of this uh, system? That's a meaningless question. It has to be considered with respect to a certain point. For example, suppose that we have the same momentum vector, but we were, say, over here at point M instead of over here at point Q. So now we draw our position vector. That's exactly parallel to P. So obviously, when we take the magnitude of these and multiply it by the sine of zero, there is no angular momentum. That's equal to zero. Or if this was pointing in this direction, so it's 180 degrees, of course, the angular momentum is still zero. Or, for example, if we were, let's say we were up here. At point D. So we draw our position vector. And we want to know what's the direction of the angular momentum vector. Now, here is the position vector, R is like this, and P is here. We slide this over so that they're tail to tail. Now, when we apply the right hand rule, we use the fingers of our right hand to align the position vector with the momentum vector. Now the thumb points upward. So now the angular momentum vector points out of the plane. So you see that when working specific problems, we try to be very careful to specify uh, at what point are we considering um, and analyzing to determine the angular momentum. Now we're used to thinking of angular momentum when we have typically a rotation type of system, but it doesn't have to be that way. For example, let's just consider a real simple setup. Say this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and we have a particle say moving past in a straight line at a constant velocity. And let's call this O, the origin. So let's say here at point one, the perpendicular distance from the origin to point one, we'll call that R. So the magnitude of the angular momentum at point one That will just be the magnitude of R times MV because they're perpendicular here. Now suppose we were at a different point. Say that's point number two. And we want to consider again what is the angle of the momentum with respect to the origin O at point two. So we'll call this R prime, this angle theta. And again, it is the magnitude of R prime times the sine of theta. M V. But R prime times the sine of theta, that's this that we called R originally. So not only 
do we have an angular momentum to consider, but the angular momentum is conserved anywhere along on this line. And if we think about it, I guess that shouldn't be surprising because it is moving in a constant direction and um, the velocity is constant too. Now let's consider, suppose we're on a circle. Now here, obviously the velocity is always changing in direction. So this is our circle. Here's the center. And say point one is up here. And it's rotating like this. So the tangential velocity is off in this direction. So this can be the momentum vector. And then let's consider another point, say right here. The tangential velocity is like this. So there is the linear momentum vector. So this could be point one, this can be point two. In each case, the magnitude of the angular momentum is going to be the same. It's the magnitude of this times mv, because that's a right angle here. These are always perpendicular. So this is going to be made to r times mv. So at point one and point two, the magnitude is the same with respect to what? The center of the circle. So this is rmv, regardless of where we are on the circumference of the circle. But what about the direction of the angular momentum. So let's consider point one. So it's r cross p. r is like this. Here's r. p is like this, but we have to consider them tail to tail. So you put it down here. There's p. Here's r. Now, we want to use the right hand rule, we want to use the fingers of our right hand to align the position vector r with the momentum vector. It's hard to demonstrate in the camera, but the thumb points upward. So, LC at point one, that's coming right out of the board. Now what about at point two? Here we have r is like this. The momentum comes off like this. We have to draw it down here, tail to tail. Apply the right hand rule, r cross p. So again, we're using the fingers of our right hand to align R with P, and again, it's pointing upward. So, that also is coming out of the board. So for a circle, if we consider the angular momentum with respect to the center of the circle, it always has a constant magnitude, and it's always pointing in the same direction. But suppose that we had considered not the center of the circle, but maybe right here. Obviously, this is going to be a very different situation. If we're, say, over here, there is the position vector r. If we're over here, that position vector r is going to have an entirely different magnitude. So, obviously, if we consider now the angular momentum of the circle from here, then it's not going to be conserved. So, we consider different systems and we we'll ask what is the angular momentum and is the angular momentum conserved, we have to be very careful to specify what point in the system that we're working with. Now before we close this video out, let's just consider a solid object that is rotating in a plane, not in three dimensions. Another simple setup. Our 
object is like this. And here is point O, the origin. And it's rotating. So the axis of rotation is like this. And say we have a point P out here. And it's tangential velocity, and therefore linear momentum will be like this. And here is the position vector with respect to point O. Now we say, well, the magnitude of the angular momentum with respect to point O, these are perpendicular, so it's just going to be the magnitude of R. M V. Now remember for um, uniform circular motion if this is an arc length S then S equals R times theta, and ds dt, the change in that linear distance, of course that's the linear velocity, and that equals r d theta dt, and that of course is the angular momentum. So what we have is v equals r omega, and let's put that in here. So this equals R M R Omega. Or that is M R squared Omega. And this is general definition for the moment of inertia. And in our problem, with respect to this point, O. Oh. This is omega, so we have the general formula. We have this formula right here. However, as you'll see in the uh, later videos when we consider more complicated problems, this is not a general formula. But again, we'll discuss uh, that when we um, get involved with more complicated problems. Right now, we just want to review some of the basic concepts. So that's it for this video. Um, a reminder that the playlist for these analytical mechanics videos, and all the videos, in fact, you find the playlist is at the website digital-university.org.